In this video, we're talking about how to use the zero theorem to find the solutions to a quadratic equation. And in this particular example, we have the equation negative x plus x squared is equal to six. Now, before we talk about what the zero theorem allows us to do, the first thing we know right away is that we need to reorganize this equation because we should always write the terms of our equation in descending order of degree. So the highest degree variable should go first, which means this x squared term should come before this x to the first term, or just x. So we should put x squared first, x squared, and then our minus x. And then in order to use the zero theorem, the right-hand side of the equation is always gonna need to be equal to zero. So in order to get the right-hand side to be equal to zero, we need to go ahead and subtract six from both sides of the equation, so that on the right here, we get six minus six equals zero. So we'll just go ahead and put negative six over here, and that's equal to zero. The zero theorem is useful because it allows us to find the solutions to quadratic equations, which are different than linear equations because quadratic equations have a second degree variable involved. In other words, they have an x squared term involved, where linear equations just had an x to the first term involved. In other words, we've been used to solving equations like x minus three is equal to six. We would just add three to both sides and we would get x is equal to nine, and x equals nine would be a solution to this equation. This is a linear equation because the only variable involved is just this x to the first variable. But here we have an x squared variable, which means we're dealing with a quadratic equation. Obviously, finding the solutions to this equation is gonna be more complicated than finding the solution to this linear equation here. And that's where the zero theorem comes in. The zero theorem tells us that when we have an equation p times q equals zero, when this is the case, then we know that either p equals zero and or q is equal to zero. And that should make sense to us because if this is our equation here, p times q equals zero or just pq equals zero, the only way this is gonna be true is if p is zero because then we would get zero q equals zero or just zero equals zero and that would be a true equation. Or if q is equal to zero because then we would get zero p is equal to zero or just zero equals zero and that would also be true. Or if both of them were equal to zero, then we'd have zero times zero equals zero, and that would also be a true equation. But there's no way that this equation can be true if neither p is equal to zero nor q is equal to zero. At least one of them must be zero or both of them will be zero. So this is the zero theorem, and we can use it to find the solution to this equation. And the way that we do that is by factoring the left-hand side here. This is just a regular trinomial that we've already learned how to factor, and we're just gonna factor it into two binomials that are multiplied together and when we do that we're gonna get x and x and then we have factors of 6 that are 3 and 2 so we can go ahead and say minus 3 and plus 2 and if we multiply this back out we get x squared plus 2x minus 3x would be minus 1x and then negative 3 and positive 2 gives us negative 6 so we factored this correctly and now all we need to realize is that here we had p times q but basically now all we've done by factoring is say that we have p times q equals zero, like this. So our equation, our quadratic equation, is now in the same form as the equation in the zero theorem. And all we need to say is that in order for this equation to be true, one or both of these factors must be equal to zero. So either x minus three must be equal to zero and or x plus two must be equal to zero. And then we can solve each of these linear equations just like we solved this linear equation up here. We're back to something that's really simple for us to do. So this first one, we can just add three to both sides and we get x is equal to positive three. Here, we'll subtract two from both sides and get x is equal to negative two. What this tells us is that three and negative two are the solutions to our quadratic equation. Because if x is three, then this first factor will be zero and we'll get zero times quantity x plus two or just zero equals zero. And x equals negative two is another solution to the equation. So now what this tells us is that x equals three and x equals negative two are both solutions to the equation. And we can prove it to ourselves by plugging these back in. So if I say that x equals three is a solution to the equation and I plug it back into my factored equation here, what I'm going to get is 3 minus 3 in this first factor here instead of x minus 3, 3 minus 3, and then 3 plus 2 equals 0. And when I simplify, I'll get 0 times 5 is equal to 0. Well, 0 times 5 is just 0, so I get 0 equals 0, and that checks out. The other solution is x equals negative 2, and if I plug that in, I'm going to get negative 2 minus 3, negative 2 plus 2, 
equals zero. And when I simplify, negative two minus three gives me negative five. Negative two plus two gives me zero. And I know that negative five times zero is zero. So I get zero equals zero, and that checks out also. So I can say that x equals three and x equals negative two are solutions to the equation, and that's how you use the zero theorem to find solutions to a quadratic equation.